Okay, welcome to this first lecture in short course Introduction to Scale Theory with Applications. The name's a bit of a mouthful, but I wanted to stress that although it's a theory course, I've always tried to pick material that can be applied to real life music making in ways that seems obvious to me at least. So we'll be working in a very theoretical way. It is a theory course, but we'll always have practical applications in sight. I expect the third session to be the most practical. The second will be fairly abstract. It'll be the most theoretical. This one, really, the task is to fill in the foundations, to set up the material, the machinery that we'll use for everything else. So we're going to do, we're going to spend a lot of time in this session on definitions. And we're going to be looking to define words like note, scale, mode, and so on. Section two, and I'm um, sorry, lecture two, session two, we'll be looking at classifications of scales. We'll be looking at, uh, we'll be looking at ways in which they are, they can be described as similar and properties that they have that we can compare, use to compare different scales with each other. Number three, we'll be looking at what I would broadly call analysis of a single scale, ways to break down a single scale and learn about it and with practical applications for learning and also for uh, possibly guiding you towards musical applications of those things. So our job today is to do this, to come up with these definitions. Definitions of words like note, scale, mode and so on. You probably already know these words, but we're going to need fairly precise definitions that we have agreed on to avoid confusion and to enable us to build a theory that is in any way rigorous. It won't be fully rigorous, but it will have, we'll have to have something to build. So that's our job. And we're going to begin with the notion of a note or a pitch. And I'm going to take a little bit of a shortcut here and make an assumption that you've seen something like this before. Obviously, it's a piano keyboard. Don't worry if you don't play the piano, that doesn't matter at all. The real point of me showing you this is to show you these things here, the names of the notes. These labels are the name that we give to the sound that the piano makes when you hit the key, right? When you hit this key, the sound it makes is the sound we call an A. The notes get higher in pitch as we go this way. So if a key is if a key is on the right of another key, it's higher in pitch. Uh, I don't have a guitar. I'm sorry, I, <laughs> I don't have a piano with me. I do have a guitar. So um, I'm going to play maybe the note from here to here. A, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, and then maybe I'll go back down again. So start with an A. Hopefully that's a familiar sound. But notice if I wanted to carry on, when I get to the next note here, it's not an H. It doesn't go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. It loops around. We get the same name again. And this ought to look curious to you, I think. It probably doesn't because you're probably really used to seeing it, but it ought to look curious. They just keep doing that over and over, right? Well... I mean, clearly these aren't the same pitch. If I play these two A's, I get one here, and then I go up that. Right? This is what we call, almost by definition for our purposes, is what we call an octave. Now I'll write it like this. Octave. And I'll sometimes write it probably as 8VA. 8VA is just what you will see in musical scores that means take it up an octave. So 8VA is short for octave. And that's kind of, I'm saying that the definition for us is that it's when the note names repeat. There are acoustical, physical definitions you can get into, but we're not going to go down the road. 
So this octave interval, A to A, has a special place in the Western musical system. We consider notes that are an octave apart to be very similar. Here's a one an octave below. They're so similar that we give them the same name, A, A. That's an audio cue if you want one. Um, we give them the same name. They're clearly not the same pitch. That melody wouldn't work. If I go... It's a different tune and a much less interesting one, uh, it seems to me anyway or a much less successful one because I've, I'm playing the wrong pitch. That difference is significant and yet we give them the same name. In many ways we consider them to be theoretically equivalent. So we don't say that these are the same pitch. We say instead that they are the same pitch class. That's our word. Pitch, class. Two notes that are the same pitch class, two pitches I should say that are the same pitch class, are by definition separated by one or more octaves. Now, I don't want to labour things by getting into acoustics and the history of tuning and all of that stuff. It's all interesting stuff. It's stuff that every musician ought to know something about but it's not a suitable subject for a short course on scale theory. So I'm going to skate past that. I'm going to assume that you're comfortable with this idea that we have 12 pitch classes, A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, and G sharp. And that when we go up, if we go up higher than that, the pitch classes repeat because these notes are precisely separated by an octave. So for example, we have an E here and an E here. That distance there is an octave. Okay. Whenever I use the word note from now on, I will mean pitch class, not pitch. And I will never be concerned with pitches, only ever with pitch classes. Because in scale theory, we really don't care whether you play your scale on which octave you play your scale in, whether you displace notes by an octave, and so on. Those things matter in real-life music making. They do not matter in scale theory. And I think that's all you need to know about pitches and pitch classes and notes for us to get started.